New, 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 new. First up. Okay. We've got um, four new products um, this week from the fabrication department. Um, well, some of them are coming soon, but because, again, the next month we're going to be, you know, it's going to be a little wobbly about how and when we do our new products videos. I want to get these in so you can at least sign up. First up is um, a UART to RS-232 converter chip. This uses the TI Max 3232, sorry, 2323, um, or maybe it's 3233, I can't remember, uh, 3232. So it's a um, two-channel, two-direction transceiver. Um, you can give it three to five volts DC, which is nice because the max 232 only takes five volts. It will double the voltage um, for the V plus line, have the voltage for the V minus line. And then um, you can have transmit and receive two channels. So you can have RX and TX, RTS and CTS. Um, there's a low voltage side, which is three or five volts. And then the high voltage side, which is again, you know, plus or minus six or higher volts. Um, so great for interfacing with um, older technologies, older laptops, older, you know, sensors, barcode scanners, scales, medical equipment, whatever that uses RS-232, um, especially if they don't have a DE9 or DB9, a DSEP connector, uh, you can just wire up directly. So nice little breakout board makes it really easy to do RS-232 interfacing. Okay. Next up, we have an IR transceiver. By request, we have the IR transmitter in the store, and we had an IR receiver in the store, and people are like, well, what do I want both? And I was like, okay, I'll give you both. So this board uses a, a JSTPH four-pin connector, which we've often used for I2C. This is not I2C. It's power ground, input and output, and the output is two 940 nanometer high output, like 200 milliampere per LED, horizontal and vertical, and we've got one 38 kilohertz IR receiver. And we've got like two little LEDs at the top to let you know when data is sent and received. Um, so, wait, I had a demo and I dropped it. One second. Um, so, good for... Just, just drop it again. Um, good for when you want to do projects that have both infrared remote receiving and transmitting. You do have to hook this up to a microcontroller to decode the IR and also to generate that 38 kilohertz signal. So let's go to the overhead and I'll show this real fast. Um, so transmitter LED, receiver LED, uh, high power and channel FET to drive them, and then a receiver and then uh, on the back, this is labeled. So ground is the black wire. V in is the red wire. Um, signal in to drive the LEDs is green and the signal coming out from the receiver is white. So um, let's just power it on. So I'm going to use this other breakout kind of as a cheat code. Uh, green LED just means it's powered up. And then if I want to connect the green wire to power, you'll see... Well, you'll actually see the um, in and out because the uh, IR LED, as you see them lighting up, it's 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 uh, signaling into the um, infrared receiver because it's so bright. Um, so this is the transmit. So you would normally connect to a microcontroller and it would blink it on and off very fast. And then to receive data, you use an IR remote and then you can see the IR LED in LED. That's kind of bright. Maybe I'll shade it over here. There you go. So the in uh, receives data from IR, so you can use both. So good for like projects where you have to like read data in, resend it, uh, you know, you're doing a relay, or you just have a lot of uh, remote control stuff you're doing. All right. Next up. Next up, uh, a Type-C downstream vertical port. So you have the horizontal port in stock. People really love it. Um, so maybe you want to go top side. So this one has the port sticking up. Um, so it's a little bit of a bigger breakout because we have two rows of header to make it mechanically strong, but great if you want a port to stick up. So if you want to mount this on something, uh, you have four mounting holes, um, so that the port can stick up through an enclosure. So maybe I'll show it on the overhead real fast. It's a very, very easy to demo. So I put two strips of header. They're the same pins and then you get all of the IO, you get the two CC pins, the two SB pins, data minus data plus, um, V bus and ground. So there's two 5.1K resistors here, which means by default, the V bus is gonna give you five volts. But if you wanna hook this up to a, a power delivery chip and negotiate higher voltages, you can totally do that. 
uh, it's just set up for for downstream five volts. So by default, you know, you want like I was just showing uh, the IR um, breakout board. You know, this is just connected to a um, USB uh, power supply. I can connect this up and it's instantly powered because I don't have uh, power delivery. So I get the voltage out. Some USB-C power supplies will not do it unless you have the resistors. So those are handy and um, I don't know, nice vertical vertical style. A nice uh, strong connector too. I picked a good one. Sorry, uh, Liz picked a good one. Uh, and this is designed by Liz. So she, um, this is her first PCB design for us. Uh, so Blitz City is um, learning how to do Eagle CAD. And uh, we were using this part for another project. And I was like, let's design a breakout. And that's what she came up with. Okay, and start with Stereotype Besides you, Lady, our team, our customers, our community, and everybody who makes this thing go is? The HDC 3021 Precision Temperature and Humidity Breakout. Um, we have a lot of temperature and humidity breakouts, I know. Uh, so it's like, what's another one? So the reason I like this one is, um, yeah, there's a couple of things going for it. One, it's the most precise and accurate temperature and humidity sensor I've seen so far. I believe it is 0.8% uh, um, accurate on uh, and precise on the relative humidity, typical and 0.1 degrees C on the temperature, which is better than the SHT45. So it, it's kind of like the best available right now. Um, I like that it's three or five volt compatible. So there's no level shifters or regulator on the breakout board. So it can be very, very low power. It can run as low as 1.8 volt power and logic. Um, and there's a reset pin, which I think is handy. It's got like NIST traceability identification codes in it. And there's two jumpers on the back. You can change the address. So you can have up to four of them on one bus, which is unusual. Many times these precision temperature and humidity sensors only have one address. And so you'd have to use a multiplexer. And the price is really good. It's less expensive than other temperature humidity sensors. And again, is more precise than them. So, uh, and sorry, more accurate than them. So this is a pretty sweet sensor. Um, we've carried the HDC like 1008 series and the 1000 series. So it's good to see uh, TI step it up and uh, come up with a nice good sensor. We featured this on the great search and I've got a breakout. Uh, Arduino code is ready to go and CircuitPython library is coming shortly. Alrighty, and that is new product. New, 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 new.